Sarah from Wild Bird Farm and today we're going to talk all about tulips. I run a small flower farm and you pick area called Wild Bird Farm. We are located here in central Iowa which is zone 5 and if you watch any social media about gardening whether it be YouTube, Instagram, etc. you may have noticed that everyone is planting tulips. Well, we're also planting them over here, and I wanted to talk today uh, just some tips and tricks and kind of things that go through my mind as I'm uh, ordering tulips, planting tulips, all the things, and then also let's look at the varieties that I planted this fall. It is the week before Thanksgiving here, and we have had an unusually warm fall. So over a couple of weeks, I've been planting tulips. I plant them for commercial use, meaning that I pull the bulb up as I harvest them. So I'm planting them very close together in trenches. Uh, you probably heard the phrase kind of like, eggs in a carton so we're lining those bulbs up very closely. Um, I had one great beautiful sunny day to plant tulips and the second day was pretty windy and a little bit chilly so you never know what you're going to get in the fall when you're planting your bulbs. Uh, just a couple of things to consider. Again if you're a home gardener I recommend getting an attachment to your drill that kind of drills down into the soil. You pop the bulb down, cover it up, and you're done. That's a very fast way to plant tulips. That's how I plant my daffodils that stay in the ground year over year. But for tulips, I'm digging a large trench, um, approximately three feet by however long I need it to be, um, and putting those bulbs very closely together. I tried to dig the trench about eight inches deep, so those bulbs are getting planted for sure six inches down, but um, up to eight or nine inches down, that's just gonna help give them a longer stem. If you're planting your tulips uh, for commercial use to, to pull for cut flowers, you want to make sure you're rotating where you plant them. Um, Tulips are susceptible for different types of disease, one being tulip fire, botrytis, there's others that I don't know about, but you wanna rotate the location. So this is my fifth year growing tulips and I am in my fifth location. I have not um, planted where I planted the year or two before. I believe it's seven years. Um, you're supposed to wait seven years before you would replant in the same area. Since I have plenty of space out here, I'll be going at least 10 years before I would go back to those original um, rows. Uh, one other thing you want to think about as you're planting varieties, and we'll get into, I'll put pictures up on the screen here of what varieties I just put in the ground. Um, but there are different um, cultivars. Some are gonna be early, some are gonna be later. So if you want a beautiful uh, show in your landscape or if you're planting and planning to pull those um, for cut flower bouquets, it's a good idea to have a wide range. So as you're picking uh, your varieties, look for early, look for late. There's also double tulips, fringe tulips, uh, parrot tulips. Uh, there's also single tulips, which I'm not even planting very many of before. I'm trying to get into the specialty arena and try and um, kind of entice customers that way with something maybe they don't have in their front yard. You want to make sure you're buying high quality bulbs. So from some of the big box stores, getting a little pack of 10 or 12 is perfectly fine. Um, there's two places that I bought bulbs from this year. One is a gentleman named Jake. He runs Small Scale for the Wholesale Grower on Facebook. That's a private group that you um, can request to be a part of. Um, he sells things in smaller lots. So this is a great idea um, for you if you're just starting out, if you aren't sure what varieties you like, um, to start with something that's a little bit smaller scale. A lot of the big companies um, aren't selling a single bulb in anything smaller than 100 packs, um, and often you have to buy them in um, groups of 500. So that's a lot of tulips if you aren't knowing if you like them, if the stems are long enough, um, you know, if the colors coordinate with whatever else you have planted. So something to think about. Um, one thing that I've done 
all five years from Jake. This may be the last year I do it just because I have my varieties kind of honed in now. Um, but he has mixed varieties of all the different types. I love getting those because then I can kind of track back and figure out what variety popped up that I absolutely love and then I can order it in a larger quantity the following year. is that tulips are relatively expensive compared to buying a pack of seeds. So I would recommend starting small um, and also have an idea of what you're gonna do with these. So if you're a home gardener or maybe you just wanna grow enough to gift some bouquets, that's awesome. If you want to grow enough tulips though that you're putting bouquets or arrangements together to sell, or maybe you wanna have a tulip you pick, something that I, an idea that I've thrown around. You really wanna have a good idea of your sales outlets because you're going to be most likely um, shelling out thousands of dollars for tulip bulbs. So you want to have a plan in the spring um, when they start popping up pretty quickly what you're gonna do with them. And then speaking of spring, the other thing to keep in mind, and it's something that I had to modify for this upcoming spring, is how intensely you have to be involved with the, your tulips. So when you're harvesting them, you wanna harvest them for the most part, most varieties, when the bulb is just coloring up. If you wait until they're opening in the field, it's really too late to pull them to sell as cut flowers. They aren't going to last very long. If you get them where they're still closed, um, but a little bit of color on the tips and you pull them, you can store them in um, a cooler for quite a long amount of time and that really spreads out your selling season. Um, so all this to say, keep in mind how busy you are in the spring. The springtime is crazy for me, not only on the farm trying to get uh, transplants started, transplants out in the field, get the field cleaned up, ready for the year, I also have a lot of family obligations. We are very busy with activities in the spring. And to pile on top of that, I have a child who's graduating in May. And between April and May is when we're getting all of our tulips popping. So that's something else you wanna consider. I also look at the dates of Easter and Mother's Day. Lately, Mother's Day has been on the tail end of my tulip harvest. I think maybe our, well, for sure last year, but over the last several years, springs have been warmer and come a little bit earlier, which means the tulips are gonna come earlier. So I think I wrote it down, last Mother's Day was the 14th of May. This year it's the 12th, so very similar. Uh, Easter moves around a little bit. Easter last year was April 9th. Um, but Easter this year is March 31st. So March 31st, I may not see a lot of tulips if I'm growing them just out in the field. So that's something to consider. Am I gonna miss those big holidays and what am I gonna do with all these tulips? And then Mother's Day for us is really at the tail end. So if I don't have a good way, a cooler to store these, um, or I'm not picking the later varieties that are gonna come closer to May, again, I might have um, tulips in a lull in a time where maybe people aren't hungry or looking for flowers. So that's just something else to consider. So all that said, as we go out into the field here, I have just under 25 tulips that I planted. That's down quite a bit from last year. I was at about 4,500 last year. But considering the spring we're gonna have, the fact that we're gonna have to be focusing on activities and graduation, um, I decided to scale it down a little bit. I tried to pick varieties that are hopefully gonna hit early and then hit later um, to try and catch Mother's Day. Um, and then in addition to those, and I did put all of those just out in field rows. I've grown them under cover in my hoop house before. Um, they were okay, but I don't really have enough room in there to plant enough tulips to really get a good harvest to sell. So I don't have any in the covered space this year. I am going to be growing some hydroponically in water. And I tried that last year for the first time. I just did um, some sample runs to see how it would go. I feel like hopefully I've got my system dialed down. I ordered specific varieties for that. They're in my fridge right now, just continuing to get their cool hours. 
um, but I have hydroponic trays I'm going to do those in um, and I'm going to shoot for Valentine's Day for those. So I will do a separate video as I get to planting those um, right around Christmas time. When I counted it out, I've got to get those started here uh, just before Christmas to hopefully see them for Valentine's Day. Um, but we'll talk about those varieties. I think I have five um, varieties for that. So I saved 700 bulbs for that. Um, but other than that, I have just under 2,500 in the field. And now let's look and see how I planted and what varieties are out there for the spring of 2024. Okay, so jumping into my first round and uh, first area of tulips, my daughter helped me. She was a great helper. She dug a lot of the dirt, which tends to irritate my back. We got a lot planted here and we'll kind of walk through what varieties we put in this area and then which ones went in the second area. And just for reference, you're looking at about 900 tulips in this row. First up is Columbus, a very dark pink with white tips. Absolutely gorgeous. This is one of my absolute favorite double tulips. And this is considered a double early variety. So blooming on the earlier side of the doubles. Next up, I'm gonna talk about Angelique here first, and this is Fanola. And First of all, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing everything right, so bear with me. Um, these are both double late varieties, and here is a personal picture that I took last year. I got this in a mix. This is the way I found a lot of my favorite varieties, and I actually am not sure which one it is. And even getting both of these bulbs um, from the same bulb supplier, they have the same picture for both. So it's gonna be very interesting to see here if there are any differences or maybe there's just two names for this specific tulip. Next up is a beautiful fringed tulip called Brisbane. And again, I found this in a mix that I got last year. Absolutely gorgeous coloring. Next up are several parrot varieties of tulips. These proved last year to be some of my absolute favorites. First is the Amazing Parrot with a little bit oranger coloring. Then we have Apricot Parrot and Avignon Parrot. All beautiful. Again, I really got to know these because I bought some mixes last year that had several parrot varieties in them. They're so unique, um, uh, really open up. To be huge tulips, um, you do have to wait a little bit later than a lot of the other tulips um, when you're picking them. Let them color up and get a little bit bigger before you pull them. Out of all the tulips I planted, only two were single petal varieties. One is this Darwin hybrid called Salmon Impression. It's a gorgeous color. It really puts on beautiful blooms. You can pick it early and it will mature um, and holds really well in the fridge. Menton is the other single variety that I have grown for four years now. Um, it is a late variety, so this is gonna bloom later than most of the other singles. And it almost has an iridescent quality about it to me. The colors are really pretty. If you're looking for a simple pink tulip, I would give this one a try. I am out here on a very windy day to do round two of tulip planting during the fall of 2023. And I'll show you my progress here. Um, I'm not gonna video it, it's so windy. I think my tripod would just be consistently falling over. And it's hard work, but I'll show you my progress here. For the second round of tulips, I pulled up an old row of sunflowers. Since I plant those in successions, these can sit out there a little bit longer um, and I don't need this row right away for planting. I ended up clearing, I think it ended up being about 20 feet of this row. And let's see here, I have 1400 tulips going in this space. So here I am up to fill my cart with all those tulip bulbs that need to go in. I have a little compost. Thank you. 
loaded and ready to go. Another reason why I like to put down a little compost is because then you know you have loose soil at the bottom that the bulbs kind of sink into. That way if you're trying to do neat rows or just trying to keep the points up, it's easier to do. I'm not quite halfway done yet, but we're definitely making progress. So I found another box, a small box, of tulips sent by Leo Burby that I didn't get in that first round with most of the other ones. One is this beautiful yellow pomponette. It's a double late tulip. And then the second one is Black Hero, also a double late. I haven't grown the yellow one before, but the Black Hero was one of my absolute favorite late bloomers last year. These were the last ones I was showing off in my home. And then as we talked about before, the rest of these are mixes from wholesale for the small scale grower. Jake has one he calls a workhorse mix, and then I also got a parrot, a fringe, and a doubles mix. I found so many of my favorite varieties through getting these mixes that I thought for sure this year I would do it again to see if I could pick up any more that I just can't live without. And then likely going forward next year, I will just be specifically ordering certain varieties. Ooh, still windy out. So here's what 1400 in the ground look like, bringing my total for in-ground planting to 2300. And remember, I am keeping back about 700 to force over the winter months. The last thing I had to do on that windy day was cover them up and get them ready for the cold winter ahead. And then come spring, I've got to be on top of my game. There will be a lot of nights I am out there looking like this with my headlamp, making sure I am getting these bulbs pulled before they blow open in the field and keeping them in the refrigerator as needed. In addition to selling jarred arrangements and wrapped bouquets, I also did a tulip bar, which was something really fun one of our local businesses hosted. There's lots of opportunity to sell tulips in the spring, but you do need to be mindful of how you're gonna move these because they aren't a cheap crop. So keep that in mind as you are planning for next year. That does it for me today. I would love to hear what your favorite tulip varieties are in the comments below. All right, that wraps up outdoor tulip planting for the season stop back next spring so you can see all of these varieties in action and also subscribe because again we'll be talking about the hydroponic tulips here in a few weeks so stay tuned happy gardening everyone